Hey, good morning. Uh, yep, that's right. It's me, Uncle Lou, live for you on YouTube today. Uh, yep, thanks for watching. And uh, feels pretty good to wake up 5-0. and oh. uh, Actually, it feels about the same as it felt yesterday, because when I woke up yesterday, I basically woke up 5-0. and oh. I had no doubt we were going to uh, uh, win that game. I did not think it would be um, 41 to nothing. I'd be lying if I told you I did. I th what was my score prediction? 30 to 17. Uh, wow. <clears throat> I mean, there's really nothing else left to say about that game from yesterday. There really was nothing even to say after the game. Um, I mean, Tennessee's just in bad shape. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to pile on on them today like, like I like to do a lot of times. Um, I, I don't know. Uh, I didn't think Butch was going to get fired this year, but I, I'm not so sure now. Um, 41 to nothing at home. That's terrible. Uh, you know, that's that's the kind of thing that will cost a man his job. Who do they have next? South Carolina. If they lose that game, I think Butch will definitely get fired because then they play Alabama after that. You know, that's a loss. LSU right now. <laughs> How you corn dogs doing this morning? Get to you in a minute. LSU and Tennessee toss up anyway. So I don't know. We'll see what happens. But I I, I honestly feel bad piling on. Tennessee fans today, so I'm just gonna I'm gonna let that go with that. But I do have a, a message for South Carolina fans, uh, the, the Boom Chickens, <laughs> and uh, and Corn Dogs. You know, I told y'all. Well, in, in the case of South Carolina, going back two years now, in the case of the Corn Dogs, all this off season, you hired proven losers. Okay. Not people that lost, not people that were proven losers 20 years ago and have since turned it around and now getting a shot in the SEC. No. You hired coaches who were proven losers at their last SEC head coaching job. Uh, Will Muschamp destroyed Florida from the inside out. I mean, just completely ruined that program. They haven't recovered, not offensively. And defensively, they don't look nearly as good this year as they have in the past either. Maybe we'll talk about that maybe later. Uh, and and LSU, <laughs> Ed Orgeron, the guy couldn't win a game at Ole Miss. You know, oh, but, but Uncle Lou, Ole Miss doesn't have corn dog talent. Well, the reason Ole Miss didn't have corn dog talent had a lot to do with Ed Orgeron. Recruiting is part of the game. Um, now, Ed Orgeron does have corn dog talent now because he's got all Les Miles' top 10 recruiting classes, and the guy loses at home to Troy. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't get it. You, you fired, the corn dogs fired a national title winning coach for a proven loser. The game chickens, the Cox, they also fired a national title winning coach. Well, they didn't fire him. He quit on you uh, after Georgia ha hung half a hundred on him in Sanford Stadium two years ago. He threw the white towel in. But the point is, you guys both replaced national title winning coaches with proven losers. Proven losers who were proven losers in the SEC at their most recent head coaching job in the SEC. And now, corn dogs and the boom chickens are surprised that, guess what? Those proven losers uh, <laughs> are losing. <laughs> Who knew? Well, I knew, and I tried to tell you. South Carolina fam, y'all beat Mizzou. <laughs> Mizzou two weeks ago. <clears throat> and then spent a week saying that the SEC East ran through Columbia this year. <laughs> After beating Missouri. <laughs> and you go out lose to Kentucky, which is not a good team. You go out yesterday, you beat Texas A&M, Kevin Sumlin, you know, this guy's, you know, this guy's typing up resumes in his spare time. 
You lose to Texas A&M, which is not another team. Not any good. How many times in a row are you going to lose to Texas? What is your losing streak up to now if you combine Kentucky and Texas A&M? Four to Kentucky. And what have you lost? Five or six in a row to Texas A&M? So you've got almost ten games there. You've lost in a row to Texas A&M and Kentucky. But the road to Atlanta runs through Columbia. I don't understand. I don't get it. Makes no sense. <coughs> Proven losers. So yeah, South Carolina and LSU, terrible. What else? Mississippi State. Not any good. That Georgia win over Mississippi State, not looking too good anymore. Auburn scored 60-something points on them? Jeez. You know how hard it is to give up 60-something points to Auburn? I don't think Auburn scored 60-something points in, in their in, in total, like in the last four games of last year. Scored it in one game against Mississippi State. Made Jerry Stiblone look like he knew what he was doing. That's damn near impossible. Mississippi State. Dan Mullen's still a good coach or no? Can't remember. I know the week leading up to the Georgia game, Dan Mullen was an elite coach. I remember hearing that, reading that. I don't know if that's changed or not. Ole Miss. I'm telling you since the offseason, they've got no motivation to play this year. You know? I mean, they couldn't win when they had top ten recruiting classes and, and were buying every recruit they could get their hands on. Of course they're not going to win now. Not even eligible for the postseason. They go from being in top 10 recruiting every year. Look at the recruiting rankings now. They're in the 30s, 40s, 50s. <laughs> Alabama hammered them. Alabama was at home, though. Home game. Pretty much anybody could beat Ole Miss like that at home. Alabama. Pretty average. <laughs> Southern Cal. Southern Cal and Texas, man. Are there two teams I was more wrong about this year than Southern Cal and Texas? Texas, terrible. Southern Cal somehow managed to, to make it to 4-0. and Behind in every game, miracle comeback. Sam Darnold got more completions to the other team than he does his own. They go out and lose. Is that Friday night? I might have talked about that yesterday. But, yeah, they go out and lose to, to Mike Leach. <laughs> A weirdo that guy is. But yeah, Southern Cal was overrated. Eat by me and, and the other polls too. They'll be they'll be dropping down. Georgia will be moving up at least one spot since Southern Cal lost. So I don't know. We'll keep an eye on that. See how that goes. <sighs> Five and zero though. Oh, did you know? <laughs> I'm used to a lot of the troll comments that come on these Uncle Lou videos, you know, like get cancer and die, or UGA is overrated, who has UGA played, you know, UGA, you know, UGA will screw it up somehow, they always do, they'll trip and fall, they'll find a way to lose a game, blah, 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 which, th that's a dumb comment for a lot of different reasons, Maybe I'll talk about that in a minute too, but there was one yesterday, I had to read it a couple of times, I said, wait a minute. Is that, is that, am I reading this right? And it was from a Georgia fan, too. I'm assuming it was a Georgia fan because his YouTube name was Dogs, D-A-W-G-S. I should have screenshotted this and put it up on the screen now, but I, I didn't think about it. But his YouTube name was Dogs, D-A-W-G-S, and then some numbers. You know, I don't know, 4871, whatever. Some, some random numbers at the end. Probably his ATM pin number. That's how stupid this guy is. But he left a comment. It was, it wasn't proper English, you know, it wasn't, the comment didn't exactly make a whole lot of sense, that's one of the reasons I had to read it a couple of times, guy, I don't know if he was drunk or high or nine, uh, or, or just illiterate, uh, but anyway, the, the basis of the comment, best I could tell, was that I'm a, I'm a bandwagon UGA fan, uh, because last year, in a video, I 
I, I was saying something. I, I was I didn't support Coach Smart or something, or I was anti Kirby Smart or something. Uh, <laughs> that's got to be one of the dumbest, most misinformed comments I've probably ever read in the history uh, of LouTube. And the reason the reason I'm I'm confused about it, well, there are several reasons. But number one, this guy has obviously been watching LouTube for at least a year because he was referencing something I said about Kirby Smart last year. I don't know what, because he didn't say something about his peewee or something. I don't know. I, I really don't know. I really should have screenshotted this thing. It's on the post-game video if anybody wants to try to scroll and look, look for it. But, <laughs> okay, first of all, let me start here. Let me start here with this comment here now. There ain't no UGA bandwagon, son. <laughs> what? How would how would there be a UGA bandwagon? D do you know what a bandwagon is? Y you have to win stuff for there to be a bandwagon for people to get on. People aren't running around bandwagoning on eight and nine win teams. What? what? <laughs> so, y your entire premise was wrong from the beginning, sir. Number two, <laughs> you must not know who you're talking to. I'm and I'm 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 anti Kirby Smart some kind of way, sir. I got Mark Rick fired for you. You owe me a debt of gratitude. My post-game Florida video from two years ago was the nail in Mark Rick's coffin. And I was on record before Kirby was hired as wanting Kirby as the coach. And you don't have to take my word for it. There's almost two years of video evidence on this channel. You can watch it. You've been watching it because you're referencing things from videos from a year ago. Now, the only thing I can think of, and, and I make videos every day of the year, so it's impossible for me to know exactly what this guy is talking about, but I tried to think, what is it? Did I, what are the worst things I said about Kirby Smart last year? I was trying to think. And I didn't say very many. And almost all of the negative things I did say about Kirby Smart, I, I uh, wrapped that in the fact that he's a first-year coach. And then people jumped on me saying I'm making excuses and blah, blah, blah. Well, you can call it an excuse. I call it reality. There were a few games last year where we had clock management issues at the end of halves. That's a head coaching issue, something you would expect from a first-year head coach. That that makes me anti-Kirby smart, uh, that I have eyes and, and understand what I see when I watch it. Uh, okay. Other than that, the only other thing I remember even saying negative at all about Kirby smart was in my post-game Georgia Tech video uh, when I took the hammer to the TV. And see right there? Can you see that? I don't know. Anyway, you see? There's proof. That TV, busted TV. At the very end of that video, after I slam the TV down and it's laying on the floor and I have the hammer in my hand, I throw the hammer down, it sticks in the TV... I walk over, I had the phone, I think the phone was sitting over here for that video, recording me destroying the TV. I walked over to pick up the phone, and right before I grabbed the phone and turned the camera off, I said, Kirby, you better get your sh together for next year. Now, <laughs> that makes me a bandwagon fan. <laughs> You know, I've been told a lot of dumb shh 
from Georgia fans over the years. And, you know, most of it just stems from the fact that I'm loud, I have a YouTube channel, people watch it, and so if a Georgia fan sees one of my videos or whatever, especially a Georgia fan who doesn't watch me all the time, so they don't really know how to take me or what I'm doing here, and they just happen to catch one of my videos maybe that goes viral or gets shared on one of these sports blogs or something like that. And, and, you know, I'll get comments on those videos from Georgia fans all the time telling me, you know, this idiot probably didn't even go to UGA. He's not a real fan. I bet he doesn't even have season tickets. Uh, you know, uh, he you know look at him. He lives in his mom's basement. You know, all that kind of stuff. I'm used to all that kind of stuff. I already know if it, well, once a video hits a certain number of views, then that means that it's got shared some kind of way because more pe people are watching it that don't normally watch. And I already know those comments are coming. But <laughs> this one caught me off guard because, I, because like I said, there is no Georgia bandwagon. Who, who has a bandwagon? Why well, everybody? Alabama's got a bandwagon, obviously. Probably some Clemson bandwagon fans right now since they won the title last year. Who else even has a bandwagon? Definitely not UGA. We haven't even won the East in five years. I mean, I mean this would be the fifth year, four year. Won it in 2012. We haven't won the SEC in 12 years. We haven't won the national title in 37 years. What, how is there a UGA bandwagon for me to even be on? I don't know. Who Velcros your shoes for you in the morning? That, that's my question. And did you take your tongue off the window long enough to type that comment? Or did you just leave it on the window and you type it like this? Uh, 